Okay, I think we're recording. Right, so I'm like two, three, four weeks into being a freelance uh, performer. Um, and it's interesting. Still looking for an agent. Uh, an agent who I feel I'd be right for and they'd be right for me. It's, it's tough. I've been approached by a couple of agencies and I'm incredibly flattered. I really am. And maybe I will work with one of them. I just need to figure out where I'm going. I'd like to primarily do some more voice work. Voice and comedy is kind of where I my passion lies. If I can do drama, excellent. But obviously, I need to prove myself in that field because I've not done much publicly viewed work within drama. Um, it'd be great. It'd be great to do that. I mean, like, who knows? Um, but voice stuff would be nice. Uh, I did a voice gig last week. Last week was really busy, actually. This week, I've got, like, kind of mostly nothing apart from a couple of meetings, and I'm doing my writing. I'm writing my children's poetry book, which I'm really happy about, and I can't wait for you all to to sample and see, like, but I've got to, I've got to write more, more first. I want it to feel like something worth buying. It's got to be chunky. Um, but I'm proud of it so far. Uh, so I've been doing that this week, but last week I had a press uh, day, um, which I'll get onto in a sec. I had... Crash what did I do? I had two meetings, I had a voice gig, where I did over 13 characters for one thing, which when you, I can't wait to show you that when it when it manifests, I can't wait for you to see that, um, that product. Uh, I do uh, songs, uh, the guys at CBBC asked me to come back and do some vocal tracks for them, um, which, was, which was fun, and uh, had lunch with everybody, and had a catch up. Um, so years... That was that was last week. That was quite busy. The week before was I had a couple of things. The week before that I had like two things. This week I've got not much apart from a couple of meetings. It's really weird life. Um, uh, I found out about a job that I auditioned for a few months back that I unfortunately haven't got. But I realised that I can handle that quite nicely. If that makes sense, like I didn't feel really upset about it. I was just flattered I was given the opportunity in the first place. Um, sort of reinforces your own confidence that you, you're even approached for things to begin with uh, whether you get them or not depends on how it, that, you can handle that however you choose I choose to look at it as being flattered basically um, but I just want to create that's what I'm here for uh, apart from these where I just talk to you guys about stuff I'm like Dodger from Press Heart to Continue uh, with Coffee Time uh, which is not what I'll call these. I'm also not as attractive as Dodger, so there is that. Anywho, uh, the press day last week was for Panto. I'm doing Panto. I'm so excited about this. I've known about this for a little while, and I've not been able to say anything, but now I can. Down below in the description is a link to buy tickets for Cinderella at the Harlington in Fleet this December. If you want to come along, please do. It'd be great to see you there, and it'd be nice to have a turn out with some of you guys have come along to watch the show. I'm playing Buttons, which is brilliant. Buttons was always my favourite as a kid. thing is, I... I a really, really, I'm a big advocate of Panto. I did children's theatre when I was studying acting and performance, and I always wanted to give Panto a try. The opportunity has not come up until now, until seven years on, and I'm glad it has, because I love, I love Panto, and I'll tell you why. Panto is one of the many reasons why people want to get into performance and into theatre and into television, because when you are young, that is the best kind of show to connect with your young brain. Like when you're younger, you're not going to be watching any Hal Pinter. You know, what I mean, you're not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to be lapping up Mammoth at the age of five. You know, um, and according to the turnout and reviews for Lindsay Lohan's stint in Speed the Plow at the minute, you still wouldn't at the age of. However, ooh, seriously though, Lindsay Lohan doing Mammoth. What? But yeah, um, mind you, anyone can do anything. Look at me. I'm playing buttons. Uh, which I'm excited for. The cast are wonderful. They're all beautiful people. Um, they're just a gorgeous cast, and it is me, Fuzzy Lumpkins. Um, so, if you'd like to come, please do. And who knows? Maybe some kids seeing that show, or kids who come along to you know just watch it and and mark and laugh, will come away going, "That looks like fun. I'd like to try that someday." Because what it's all about. Art begets art. If art can inspire more art, then it's done its job. Um, also, it has to entertain, and it will be entertaining. It's really funny. But again, enough plugging. Tickets down below in the description. Please do come along. 
I, I recently recorded some stuff with Thomas Rees K um, for for YouTube, which I've not had the chance to edit and go through yet, but I will do very soon. It's bloody funny. It was a delight to um, have him here in the Tap Cave um, and have him up in Manchesterford uh, for a couple days. That was really cool. So yes, you'll hopefully see that very soon. Um, last thing I want to talk about today, though, is Gotham. Uh, the TV series. I've not seen it yet, but I've read up on it, and my god, do I not want to see it. I'm a massive Batman fan. I love Batman. I mean, look, there's Bat-Tap back here. I love Batman. But a TV series that's trying to make Gotham gritty and realistic, and all the I'm done with the realism thing. Warner Brothers and DC are focused on making all of their superhero properties grounded, gritty, and realistic, and more importantly, dark. Here's the thing, Batman's already dark. Batman doesn't need to be made grittier and more realistic. Do a Batman TV series, dead simply, do one. Do a Batman TV show about Batman. We'll accept it. Let us know from the off that it's not gonna be big, flashy, explosions, Hollywood budget, but just do a Batman TV series. Don't do one about James Gordon, which is a great idea, but don't do one about James Gordon and then flood it with Batman characters pre-Batman. And then try and change them to fit your new aesthetic. Like, Ivy Pepper? It's Pamela Risley. She doesn't need to be in this. Selena Kyle. Most people call me Cat. Why? Because the average viewer can't figure out you're going to be Catwoman? Edward Nygma apparently has a scene, um, he's like a forensic uh, scientist for the police, crime scene investigator, and he has a scene where someone like, you know, presents the evidence and he goes, ah, there is the qu there's the answer, but what is the question and all that, and you're like, you're just trying to spoon feed people and let them know this is the Riddler. Speaking of which, I'll buy, I'll buy the Penguin, right? I'll buy Oswald Cobblepot being this age at this time in Bruce Wayne's timeline. But you're telling me that by the time Bruce is Batman, like, the Riddler's gonna be, you know, in his 40s, 50s. You're telling me that, oh God. And why is Harvey Bullock a, a corrupt cop? Harvey Bullock isn't a corrupt cop. He's an asshole, but he's not a corrupt cop. That's one of the few, in, like, he's one of the few cops that Gordon can trust in Gotham, in any incarnation, even in the Tim Burton movie. Tim Burton, who created a visually stunning Batman movie, and then a visually stunning Tim Burton movie with Batman in it, uh, Batman Returns, um, the first Batman, he's admitted since he'd never read a comic. He's probably glanced over a couple when he was working on that movie. It, it kind of shows the more you watch it. I adore that film, but it is very flawed. However, even in that movie, there was a Bullock-esque character called Eckhart. Do you know why he was called Eckhart? Because someone went, Bullock wouldn't act like that. Right, well let's change the name of the character then. Do you know what I mean? Like, even that, which was made by Kooky Tim Burton, got Bullock right by not including him in that role. Whereas Gotham is doing their opposite thing. Also, Carmine Falcone should be that age in Batman's timeline later down the line. Do you know what I mean? I just, uh oh. See, the thing is, it's doing what I thought it would do. It's doing a Smallville. Smallville, spoiler alert for the end of Smallville, a show that ended years ago. Smallville ends with Clark Kent, the very end of the last episode, hearing about a crime, whatever, ripping off his shirt on the top of the Daily Planet, there's the costume, and off he flies. And that's the last shot of Smallville. Problem with that is, he'd already done everything. He'd fought Doomsday, he'd fought Lex Luthor, he'd fought Darkseid, he met the Justice Society, like, he'd done it all. There was nothing left. It doesn't make any sense. And DC want to catch up to Marvel, who, by the way, notice this, Marvel's more successful, Marvel isn't trying to be gritty and realistic. Now, they're grounding some elements of their movies and TV shows to make it a little more plausible for those who aren't familiar with this kind of storytelling. But at the end of the day, there is still a dude who turns into a big green monster. There is still a thunder god. Do you know what I mean? In their TV series, they're making careful steps with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the upcoming Agent Carter, which sounds amazing, to link them enough so that they don't need each other to survive, but they complement each other. Now with DC, they've said their TV projects are going to be separate from their movie projects. Well, why? If you've got a Batman coming up in your new film, wouldn't it be logical to make that Batman the older version of the Bruce Wayne in Gotham? 
you've got a Flash and an Arrow TV series, Green Arrow and The Flash, right? Put them in your Justice League movie, which they've said they're not going to. But put them in it. Because when you watch a Justice League movie, which, let's face it, if they did hero, 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 and then all of them together in their own movie at the end, people will go, you just copy Marvel. No. Marvel got there first. Everyone else afterwards either has to reinvent the wheel or just keep up. But you've got ready-made superheroes. So do Batman vs Superman, which I'm not excited about remotely. Do a Wonder Woman movie. A good one. Prove that she's a brilliant character. Marvel got their raccoon and their tree out. You can do Wonder Woman. So passionate about this, sorry. Get that out of the way. Do a new Green Lantern with Jon Stewart or something. Or, or do a sequel with Ryan Reynolds that cleans up that mess and makes it, you know, better. Refine it. And then do your Justice League movie and bring Green Arrow and Flash from the TV shows. People won't necessarily think, oh, I won't watch this because I'll have to watch three or four series of a TV show. They won't think that. They'll go, oh, it's the guy from that TV show. And then they'll move on. It's great. Ready-made heroes. <sighs> Thing is, I've been talking to my friend Dale Who on Facebook. He's a lovely man, brilliant man, one of the finest fourth Doctor cosplayers in the world. Dale and I agree that DC, and sometimes Marvel, but it's mostly DC, have lost sight of what comic books are truly about. They're about adventure. They're about thrills. They're about evil overcoming good. No, they're about good overcoming evil. And sometimes evil being just as compelling, but no matter what the outcome, or the poor wording, no matter what the outcome, it's about adventure. You can read a solo book of the Joker. I've got like two entirely Joker stories down here from his point of view, and enjoy it. But as long as it's about an adventure, as long as it's about characters, and not about how dark they can be, and about how gritty they can be. I mean, this is a discussion for another time. I could talk about this every day, like forever and a day, but I won't. DC, stop trying to convince people that comic books are grown up and that the superheroes need to be dark and just tell good stories. That's what we want. <sighs> There's a reason more people are excited for Captain America 3 than they are at Dawn of Justice. So. Just saying. Right, tell me down below what your thoughts. Uh, I'm probably going to talk more about this. Anything else you want to know my opinion on in relation to it? DC and Marvel. Who's doing it right? And why? What can DC do to sort themselves out a little bit? And also, while we're here, tell us. Are you come to see the Panto? If you are, let me know down below. Okay? I'm going to go now. I've got more nothing to do. See you later.